make it appropriate to any era. Even the through tenons on the stretchers display sharp beveled lines when revealed on the front and back legs. And the traditional finish really highlights the aesthetics of the wood, Cotterson white oak. Here's a really fine example of some Cotterson white oak lumber that we're going to be using on our nightstand. This is an example of some flat sawn white oak. Now to really understand the distinction between the two, let's try and visualize the way they're cut from the tree. Try to imagine, if you will, the end grain of the tree and the way it grows in the circular grain pattern. With a flat sawn stock, it's cut this way from the tree and the end grain ends up running parallel to the face of the board. With a quarter sawn stock, it's cut this way from the tree and the end grain ends up running perpendicular to the face of the board. This results in a sort of standard oval grain pattern on the flat sawn stock, but on the quarter sawn, we get this very distinctive medullary reflect pattern, which is the trademark of the arts and crafts style furniture. Now on our nightstand, it becomes a particular challenge to reveal that quarter sawn oak pattern, especially when we're talking about the legs. That's because with the leg stock, when we cut these, that quarter sawn oak is only going to be revealed on two sides. But we've got a solution for that. We're going to go to the bandsaw, cut some quarter sawn oak veneer, and we'll glue that onto the two opposing sides. That way, we'll have that medullary reflect pattern exposed all the way around. To cut our quarter sawn oak veneer, we'll set our bandsaw to sixteenth of an inch. That'll give us a healthy thickness of stock to work with. Now it's also important to remember to use a good sharp blade, especially when we're cutting pieces of wood this thin. That'll ensure an accurate cut. So we'll go ahead and cut our veneer, two pieces of stock for each leg. Once it's cut, we glue the veneer to our leg stock, trying to get a good grain match between the veneer and the patterns on each leg. Masking tape helps to keep the veneer in place. It'll take about two hours for the glue to dry. Now that our glue is dried, we're ready to go ahead and trim up the veneer on our leg stock. We're going to do this with a flush bearing bit at our router table. Now the way this system works is that this rub collar is going to go ahead and rub up against the leg stock and then the cutters will go ahead and trim away that excess veneer and leave us a nice smooth cut. So put on our safety glasses and go ahead and trim these up. Next, we cross cut the legs to length on the table saw in preparation for the joinery. We're getting ready to do the joinery on our legs. Now we're going to use a mortise and a tenon construction. On these rails and the aprons, we're going to use a concealed tenon. So on the leg stock, our mortises won't go all the way through. Now down here where the stretcher goes, we're going to use a through tenon. So the mortise goes all the way through front and back. That way it's going to show on the front and back of the nightstand and really add a nice decorative touch. So to cut all of our joinery, we're going to use this tool. This thing's called a multi-router. Now what's different about this is that the router is mounted horizontally. It's got some really nice attachments over here on the side that make it really easy to control our length, our width, and the depth of our mortise. So now that we're all set up, we're going to go ahead and cut our through mortises in our legs. With the multi-router, adjustments are easy, so we can quickly change the setup to cut the mortises for our aprons. And then for the front rails for our drawer. Once the mortises are cut, we square them up with a sharp chisel, so we'll make a good fit with our square tenons. 
For more details on making this nightstand, check out our website at DIYNet.com. Coming up, making tenons that add some stylish detail to our nightstand. Welcome back. Our project this time is this arts and crafts style inspired nightstand. We've dressed up the legs with quarter sawn oak veneer and cut the mortises on our legs. Next, we'll complete the joinery by making the tenons. To do that, we'll use this tenoning jig and make the cuts here on the table saw. Now here's one of our aprons that we've already made some cuts on. We'll use this as an example to show you how this system works. Essentially, we clamp it into place, slide it over the blade, and that'll cut away one of our cheeks. We pull it back, unclamp it, and then we flip it, make another pass, and that'll cut the other side of our cheek. That's going to determine the thickness of our tenon. Now the beauty of this system is that we can use the same process to cut all of our rails and our aprons. After we cut our cheeks, we changed our setup on the table saw to go ahead and cut our shoulders all the way around the tenon. Now all we had to do was to raise the saw blade until it meets the side of the tenon. Now for the rails, we just butt it up against the stop lock, go ahead and make a cut, and then rotate it around until we've made all the cuts all the way around our shoulders. On the aprons, we want a deeper shoulder to add strength. For that, we raise the blade and cut a notch in the side of our stock. Then on the bandsaw, we cut out the notch, which gives us a shoulder deeper along the side of the tenon. For our stretchers, our tenons are gonna to need to be long enough to go through the front and the back leg. So what we'll need to do is go ahead and crank up our table saw blade to two and an eighth of an inch high. This will give us the length we need for our tenons. Now the good news is that the thickness of our tenon gets to stay the same. So our tenon and jig gets to stay set up the same way. Once the cheeks are cut for our stretchers, again we notch the sides to create a deeper shoulder. Then on the bandsaw, we cut away the notch to reveal our through tenons. One of the major design elements of our arts and crafts nightstand is going to be this exposed tenon on our stretchers. Now to be in keeping with the arts and crafts style, we're going to want to go ahead and put a bevel all the way around these edges. This would be a great time to do this. You know why? It's going to be a whole lot more difficult to do it after the table is glued up. So to accomplish this, we're going to use a bevel bit at the router table with a bearing on top. That way, we can go ahead and freehand this thing through here and get a nice subtle bevel all the way around our edges. Next, we take the stretchers back to the multi-router and set it up to cut a long mortise. That's where we'll fit the tenon from our shelf. Just checking the fit on our stretcher. We want to make sure we have a nice tight fit on our through tenon where it comes through the front of the leg. But on the back of the leg, this mortise is actually going to be covered up by this shoulder. So it's important for the glue up to sort of pare this away a little bit so we're not fighting this thing. Now this can be easily accomplished with a nice sharp chisel. We'll just make some paring strokes here and take away a few shavings on the back side of the mortise. We've already cut the mortises and the stretchers for our shelf. Now, we've gone ahead and dry clamped the whole assembly together for our nightstand. This is a really good time to go ahead and take the measurements for our shelf. So when we make the cuts, 
You want to make sure it fits between the stretchers really nice and tight. Once the shelf is cut to length, we repeat the process we used earlier to cut the integral tenons. When you're doing a glue up as complicated as this nightstand, there's several things that you can do to make life easier on yourself. One of the things is to clearly mark your joinery so that there's no confusion and you know which joint goes where. Another thing is to go ahead and lay out all of your parts and pieces so all the assembly goes together real nicely. Putting some masking tape on, that helps quite a bit, especially during cleanup. But what I recommend most is using some slow setting glue. That way you don't have to panic and there's plenty of time to go ahead and get the glue on and clamp the piece up and not worry about the glue drying on you. If you're wondering how many clamps it takes to do a glue up, it's however many you need to pull the joints tight. When we return, making the drawer for our nightstand. Welcome back. Our project this time is this classically designed nightstand made out of quarter sawn white oak. We've made all the pieces for our framework and glued them together. Now we're ready to build the drawer. Let's take a look at the prototype that we've already put together. We use some half inch solid maple for the drawer sides because it's strong, stable, and easy to work with. We used eighth inch maple plywood for the bottom, but the main thing is for the drawer front, we cut a piece of quarter saw and white oak. We attach it to the front of the drawer, so that way it'll match the rest of our nightstand. For our joinery, we're going to be making a locking rabbit joint. Now this is a relatively easy joint to cut, but it'll be strong enough for our application. Now we can cut that right here on the table saw, but before we do, we need to cut a dado in the sides of our drawer to accept the plywood bottom. We're making the rabbit for our locking rabbit joints. We'll cut a rabbit in the front and back of our drawer stock. Now another way to think of this joint, it's like a tongue in a groove. By cutting away a rabbit, we've created our tongue. Now on the drawer side, we've got our groove. We created this by making a dado cut here and notching away some wood so our tongue fits into our groove. And that gives us our locking rabbit joint. Once our joints are made and the bottom panel is cut, we can start gluing the drawer together. We're using some quick setting yellow glue to put our drawer together. Because the bottom is made of plywood, we don't have to worry about expansion or contraction. So we went ahead and glued it into our dado, and that'll just add some extra strength to the drawer bottom. Check this for square. Looks good. We'll give the glue a couple hours to dry, and then we'll be all set. Our next piece we need to make for our arts and crafts nightstand is the top. We've already gone ahead and glued up three pieces of quarter sawn white oak to get the width that we need. Then we sanded them smooth, and now we're going to cut them to length and width on the table saw. After that, we'll take them to the router table and use an eighth inch radius bit to go ahead and soften these sharp edges. To support the drawer for our nightstand, we need to make some runners to make sure that our drawer slides in and out smoothly. Now for the top, we're simply going to use a piece of oak that we've notched out around the corners. We've glued a couple of these into place, and this will support our drawer at the top. For the bottom, we've made this L-shaped bracket. Now this is basically just two pieces of oak glued together. We've notched this out in front, drilled a couple of holes for screws. 
And this way, we've got some adjustment so we can really fine tune the action to make sure that our drawer slides in and out smoothly. Just finishing up trimming our drawer front to size. Now we're going to go ahead and hold it in the opening here, make a little pencil mark. We can see that we need to trim off just a little bit more. Now what we're going for is a really snug fit. Ideally what we'd like to see is about a 1 32nd of an inch gap all the way around. Now an eighth of an inch would be considered too sloppy. And a 64th would be too tight. On a really humid day with a 64th of an inch gap you'd have a heck of a time getting this drawer out of here. With the fit dialed in on the drawer front, we can soften the edges with some 220 grit sandpaper. We'll wait to attach the front to the drawer until after the finish is on. We're just checking the fit of our top to our framework. Now to attach this, we've got some tabletop fasteners. These are also referred to as figure eights. Now the beauty of these things is that they swivel back and forth, and that's going to allow our top to expand and contract. Now before we screw the top on, we've got to put on our finish. And to do that, we've got a special preparation already set up outside the workshop. Coming up, how to color our nightstand using authentic arts and crafts technique. Welcome back. We've only got a few more steps to finish work on our arts and crafts style nightstand. You can get more details on building this nightstand by going to our website at DIYnet.com. We've built the drawer and the top. Now we're ready to color the wood and add the finishing touches. We're taking our arts and crafts style nightstand and setting it into a temporary plastic tent. Now the reason that we're doing this is that we're getting ready to fume it with 26% aquamonia. This is the authentic way that arts and crafts style pieces were finished back in the 1920s. Now we'll take a dish of liquid aquamonia, and after the tent is sealed up, we're going to make an opening and slide it in there. The vapors from the ammonia are going to react with the tannic acid in the oak. And this is going to turn the oak into a really deep, dark aged silvery brown color and really accentuate that medullary ray grain pattern. The ammonia solution in the tent reacts with the wood overnight. Then we add a couple of coats of tongue oil and some hand rubbing to bring the wood to a full silvery luster. We're putting on our hand hammered copper handle onto our arts and crafts style nightstand. Now let me clarify something for you about our fumed finish. Don't make the mistake of using household ammonia because it's not going to work. What you want to use is 26% industrial strength aqua ammonia available from a chemical supply house. That will give you this authentic arts and crafts style fume finish like we have in our beautiful nightstand. The quarter sawn oak displays its fine grain throughout the piece. The exposed tenons on the front and back legs add to the classic design. And the silvery tone brought on by the fumed ammonia finish completes a look rich in the traditions of the arts and crafts style. <laughs>